guys, how's it going? It's your boy, Big Blue Drew, 97 here, coming at you with a uh, manga review for My Hero Academia, manga chapter 276, titled You Cheated. And um, uh, unfortunately, there, there's something I have to admit to y'all. Um, yes, I uh, did cheat uh, with this chapter. Um, I, I read it a day early, I, I couldn't help it. But uh, yeah. Uh, for the most part, like, when it comes to that title of You Cheated, that can apply to really both sides, and I may talk about that a little bit um, later on in this uh, video, but um, there are a few things I want to talk about uh, first um, when it comes to this chapter, because this chapter was a really good chapter. Like every My Hero Academia chapter for the past, like, few weeks have been very good chapters, and this one is no exception. And a lot of what I'm going to say in this video, I also talked about in the spoiler video, so if you haven't seen that, uh, go watch it, um, as well as uh, leave a like on this video if this is a video that you are interested in, something that you like watching, as well as subscribe to my channel. And um, with that little uh, shit out of the way, I really want to go right into this review of this chapter. So we start this chapter off with the uh, news reporting on what is going on um, in the city right now. And the name of the city is Shaku City. So we get the name of the ch we get the name of the city in this chapter, as well as we get a better understanding of the scale of this war. Because we have these reporters who are looking above the city in helicopter, and as they are doing that, we have a reporter who basically is like, wow, there's a whole lot of destruction here. A whole lot of the heroes are evacuating and working with law enforcement. And apparently one third of the city has been turned to ash. So we get a confirmation of how much of Jakku city was destroyed by Shigaraki's decay, which is apparently a third, which shows that Shigaraki does have control of his decay. And that's something that is talked about a little bit more in this chapter but it shows that he was able to precisely decay like a third of the city. And we pretty much know that because he also didn't decay the area that he was standing in. So we get that revelation, as well as we get a lot of like the news uh, talking about like how the heroes are doing and who or what they are fighting. And that's actually an important thing that they qualify the difference between like they may be fighting someone or something. So you have all of these news people talking about this and a few points are made by the news anchors that are very important uh, to address. Mainly uh, one of them is addressing how all of this uh, destruction is reminiscent of the prior year, uh, the prior uh, terrorist attacks at, uh, in uh, Hoshu where Shigaraki first sent out the no moves to destroy the city, city uh, with Stain and then you have Kamino with All For One versus All Might. And then you also, as I said, they also make reference to, uh, they also make reference to Deka City where Shigaraki faced against the Paranormal Liberation Army. So the news are talking about how all of these terrorist attacks are coming one after another and how they haven't decreased over the years. And they make this one statement of what's happening, what's going on in Japan right now? Where is this country? headed as you see all might and airy looking on the computer looking at the news you have all the students of uh, family members uh, mainly deku shoto and bakugo's families just minding their own business and then you have uh, all for one in tartarus knowing exactly what's happening and the point that i really want to address is what these uh, anchors what these news people are saying how they're saying uh, what is going on in japan right now and like where is this country headed and i think this is kind of foreshadowing and what these are saying is it's foreshadowing for what is going to happen at the end of this arc because people are saying where is this country heading to what's going to go on in japan and i think what it is alluding to is that the villains are going to win we as readers are pretty much like no without a shadow of a doubt the this war arc is going to end in the villains win but i think this is establishing more of like how this is going to affect society and like what is going to like really do when it comes to the shake of society and this is bolstered up a little bit more later on in this chapter by comments made by the heroes but all of this is just foreshadowing for the fall of the heroes and the rise of villains hence the rise of the hero saga that we're in right now 
And with that, we actually cut over to uh, basically the continuation of manga chapter 275, where you see uh, Razorhead standing there and Manuel and Rocklock has joined him to help him out. Uh, just to let you know that they're gonna be in this chapter. They're not gonna do a whole lot. Uh, Manuel actually does help Eraserhead by like by uh, allowing him to like have water in his eyes so that he's able to keep his eyes longer, but not give him too much water to like oversaturate it so that he eventually will have to break. So we just get that continuation of this chapter and something that is shown in this chapter is that Shigaraki has the phone that he picked up when he was uh, at the hospital and he makes a command. He says, kill every person you see. And this is later on in this chapter elaborated more on, but I will say that this moment shows that Shigaraki knows what he is doing. But with that, we actually get the reveal of uh, one of Endeavor's uh, sidekick's quirk. Uh, the name of the sidekick is Kido, and he's the guy that's wrapped up in uh, mummy bandages. And we get the reveal of what his quirk is, which is a traject, which he basically allows for the alteration of moving bodies. So basically he, he basically he can alter the direction of whatever thing is flying towards him. And if you remember correctly, uh, Endeavor cannot fly. He can fall with style, cause you know, that's what you do, but he cannot fly. He can propel himself forward. He can propel himself backwards, but he can only do it at like a certain height. Like if he's up in the air, he can propel himself forward, but he can't physically fly. So it's great that he has uh, Kido on his side because what he does is that he changes the trajectory of Endeavor from going in a straight line to going upward to where Shigaraki is because Ryuku threw him into the air. So we see that he's about to t attack Shigaraki. He's like thinking like, you killed so many people. I'm, but he's basically going to kill Shigaraki in this moment. But while he's doing this, he looks at Shigaraki, he throws like full force attack on him, and then he's like, huh, his quirk is erased, right? So how did he survive that? Because Shigaraki survives Endeavor's like firepower. Yes, his, um, if I remember correctly, it's going to be his left arm, which has the uh, two fingers left on it. His left arm is still there. It singed a little bit, but Here's the moment that Endeavor comes to a realization, as well as other characters in the vicinity come to a similar realization, also because Dr. Kudagarakli explains it, that he has the power, the speed, the durability without the use of a quirk. His body has been modified to the point where he can be stronger, faster, more durable, and Endeavor thinks about this power being comparable to All Might. And unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, Dr. Garaki confirms that yes, his body has been modified. It's not to the same level of All Might, but it has been modified to a significant extent. And we see that in the chapter, how he was able to survive the fire without using a quirk. And even Eraser is looking at this like, I know for a fact his quirk is being erased. And then he comes to this conclusion of, does that mean that he's a perfected Nomu? So I think with that comment from Eraserhead, also the fact that, you know, Eraserhead is, his leg is being captured by a certain villain, a certain thing, as he remembers the first Nomu he fought when he mentions a perfected Nomu, but that basically confirms not concretely, later on it's concretely confirmed what Shigaraki is, but it's alluding to the fact that he might be a Nomu, but he's perfected because he, because if we remember correctly, Nomus are just modified corpses, but now you have a modified living human, so he may be the perfected version of that. So that's a possibility, and it's confirmed later on in this chapter that that is the case, and I'll get to that at that point. But with that, we actually see a moment of like showing how powerful Shigaraki is because as a Ryuku comes to the rescue of Endeavor and tries to stop Shigaraki, uh, they both slam into the ground hard and you just see this big boom and we do not see the immediate effect of it because we immediately cut over to uh, Gran Torino 
and Deku and Bakugo as they've escaped the area. And Deku is just like all like frazzled. He's like, oh, Gran Torino, oh, what, wait, what's going on? What's happening? Oh, by the way, I told uh, Bakugo about everything. And Gran Torino's like, yeah, 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 I know. I heard it from Toshinori. Uh, yeah, it's fine. And we get an explanation of like what is really going on through the use of a map. I'm gonna be honest, I love seeing like maps like this and not just manga but anime like kind of like explaining where people are uh something that i liked in the one piece anime is like they show like where people are in relationship to everyone else so i'm glad that they put this in there and uh, from what this map shows and what brent you know uh tells us about it is that basically the heroes were trying to create like a pincer around shigaraki luring him towards eraser so that eraser head can erase his quirk and all the heroes can jump him and arrest him while other heroes are evacuating the area they tried to put shigaraki in an eraser head's eyesight which they did succeed so Gran Torino says that he's gonna go and help eraser head because you know he's speedy and he's gonna help to defend him and deku is like oh but but why like, can't can i come with you and it, Gran Torino, he doesn't straight out say no, but Deku also mentions that, oh yeah, Shigaraki uh, uh, may have uh, all for one. And Gran Torino is like, oh, well, if that's the case, then uh, he doesn't straight up tell Deku to stay there, but he says this. He's says, uh, Gran Torino does not straight up tell Deku to stay there, but what he says is just as chilling. What he says is this. If Shigaraki manages to get one for all then that is worse than the worst case scenario which is true because you think like the worst case scenario is that shigaraki escaped all the heroes are doomed that's bad but there's a possible chance to stop him next time but if he gets all one for all then there's no way to escape him there's no way to stop him because not only does he have like the power and the durability and the ability to steal quirks uh, related to all for one, he also has the modified body. But then if he gets the quirk of one for all, then he will basically be invincible. And a point of note that I also want to uh, make is that uh, at this moment, we know that Chigaraki does not have his quirks activated, but he has the physical strength that is comparable to All Might. We know that Deku is the next user of all one for all, which would mean that when he's able to master it, he'll be powerful, more powerful than All Might. So at this moment, it shows that even though Shigaraki and his base form is, it's comparable to All Might, not to the same extent, Deku is still technically f stronger with his quirk. So this just shows that they can have a fight where we know for a fact that Deku is not gonna win it, but it's not gonna be a complete slaughter, especially if Shigaraki does not have access to his decay quirk and his quirk of uh, all for one. But after that talk with Grantino, we actually get uh, the point that I was making about how uh, the first part of this uh, chapter is foreshadowing the fall of the heroes, is that you have a whole group of like heroes and sidekicks who are like, come on, let's get him, he's just one guy. And I think this may be coming from Burner or everyone is just saying this, but this is something that is interesting. This is exactly what is said by like either one person in this group of heroes. And it says, if this many of us can't get the job done, then what is the point of this hero saturated society? And I think this is a crucial piece of information that solidifies the fact that the heroes are not gonna win even though they have the larger number. Because when it comes to the villain side, yes, they have a whole lot of villains on the sides, but for the most part, all of these villains have been training like most of their lives, and they have these incredible quirks, while the heroes, they have them based solely on numbers and not quality. And the fact that they bring this up is like, if we can't take down one person, then what's the point of having this hero saturated society? It's alluding to the fact that, yeah, even with all of these heroes, you can't probably can't take down this one person and if they don't take down shigaraki it confirms that idea that this society is too filled with heroes we don't need quantity we need quality and because of that that could potentially lead to the downfall of the hero society that we view in the present story arc this single line 
is the confirmation that the heroes are going to lose this and that there's going to be reform of the hero society and how heroes are run after this arc. Straight up guaranteed, and you can infer it directly from this room line. So I'm glad that uh, Hirokoshi put this line in here, just hammering in more of that confirmation that after this arc, hero society is going to change, most likely for the worse, as the villains come into power. And immediately after that, like, moment where the uh, heroes make this speech, uh, they're immediately flanked by a whole group of Nomu. And what is great about this is that you have all of these Nomu and they are all in different shapes and sizes. You have like a Nomu that looks like a dinosaur. You have a Nomu whose mouth, its head is inside of its mouth and its mouth is like split wide open. And the best Nomu of the group is a Nomu that is a dog. There's just a dog Nomu, and it's great, and it's funny, because you have Bakugo, Deku, and uh, Gran Torino, who are just looking at it like, oh, no. And uh, this is something that I talked about in the spoilers, about uh, how these are not the high-end Nomus, they're just regular Nomus. And in this chapter, we get clarification on exactly what kind of Nomus they are, and I was right about that, and I was also wrong about it. Uh, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but I really want to talk about uh, something that I brought up in the spoilers as well, where you have the image of Shigaraki uh, standing on Endeavor and Ryuku, uh, holding up his fists in the air, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, he's holding up his uh, right hand in the air with his left hand on the side, and the same way that uh, Endeavor, when he fought that high-end Nomu, and how All Might fought all for one, showing that they have triumphed. And it's portraying that, oh no, Shigaraki defeated the number one hero, we're all doomed. But no, Endeavor just comes up and it's like, get off of me. So I was right about the idea that and Shigaraki did not take down the number one hero at this moment. He was just being, he was just being funny. He was just taunting the number one hero. And it's like, yeah, huh. It's, this is how it's supposed to be done, right? Uh, whatever. As Endeavor kicks him off. And then here's the point where you get more confirmation of like, how everything in um, this art, how since Shigaraki was awake up until this moment, everything that he has done up until that point was calculated and planned. Because we get the reveal that uh, he can control his decay now, and that how uh, he uh, made sure to decay like a lot of areas, but making sure to keep the Nomu capsules intact. And then we get a flashback to uh, the doctor, Kurai Garaki, explaining to Shigaraki how the high end Nomus uh, work and how they're activated. Where Shigaraki was questioning, like, are they just going to break out of here? And the doctor's like, no, 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 no. They can only be activated by an electrical impulse. And that they can, and when they are awakened, they'll obey a certain few groups of people. So all you have to do is give them an order and electrocute them, and then you'll be good. And then we have Shigaraki thinking, like, ha. Ah, Wow, these mindless Nomu, they're great subordinates to someone who's going to be the king of the villains. And as he says this, uh, and while that happened, while he's thinking that, Kudairaki is on the ground with Prison Mike. So, Prison Mike is alive, holding Kudairaki, as usual. And Kudairaki explains that what Shigaraki did with the impulse that not only disabled the communication with the heroes, but was able to activate these high-end, like, Nomus. And we get the explanation of what these Nomus are. They are uh, comparable to the high-end Nomus when it comes to strength. They just cannot think for themselves. So they're called near high-ends. But we also get to reveal that the electrical impulse that Shigaraki sent out also activated them, as well as Shigaraki's decay was controlled enough to try to save some of them. So, let's go down the list of how Shigaraki was able to do this. One, as soon as he woke up, he was capable of decaying the entire area of a third of the city, while allowing for the decay not to spread to particular near high-end Nomu tubes. He was able to pick up the phone, that he found in the area. Look for it, pick up the phone. Uh, we do not know what he's going to do with the quirky racing bullets, but we know for a fact now that he's probably gonna use them for something atrocious, but he picks up the phone. He then used his quirks from all for one to not only 
disrupt the communications between the heroes, but use that exact same electron electric pulse to activate the Nomus, and then use the phone to tell the Nomus what to do, which would be to kill anyone in his way. He did all of this within a reasonable amount of time, and by reasonable, I mean like maybe at most five minutes. This just shows that Shigaraki is not just um, someone who just goes with the flow, that he doesn't isn't just impulsive, that he's not just a powerhouse, he's not just bronze, he also has the intelligence and the brains to implement these powers. The fact that he was able to combine the quirks of two separate quirks without knowing like how they work and not only uh, disrupt the heroes but also boost his own side just shows that Shigaraki for the most part is a comparable very intelligent villain that if you go up against him and underestimate him, you will die. So yeah, we get the confirmation that they are high end Nomus, and then we have Gran Torino who's like, okay, I'm gonna go help you race ahead. Uh, yeah, you two uh, hide. And while he says this, Deku's like, the worst case? And while that happens, Shigaraki, with his immense strength, as his quirks are still erased, goes after the Razor Head, and not only him, but also these uh, near high ends are also going after a Razor Head. At least two of them are. A Razor Head is just looking at this. He has Rocklock to try to defeat him, which it's Rocklock. He's probably not going to do much. And Manuel, who's helping him keep his eyes up, and he begins to think to himself, I can't afford to die. I have to live. I have to defeat Shigaraki. I have to to watch my students graduate. I will be there for my students graduation. He says, I still need to. And as he's thinking this, Shigaraki is like, Shigaraki says that Eraserhead is in his way. Eraserhead says that Shigaraki is in his way. And as Eraserhead says that, you have the image of all of his students going on in the background. And as Eraserhead is being pursued by Shigaraki, and as Shigaraki is like moments away from touching him, as Gran Torino and Rocklock, for the most part, will not get to him on, in time. All of a sudden, Deku comes in for the save. He saves his sensei, as well as Bakugo is right behind him, as they say that it's their turn. It's their turn to save their sensei, as the chapter ends. And boy, I was really hoping that that was going to be present, Mike. It makes sense that it's the students. Really thought it was going to be present, Mike. But this makes a whole lot of sense too, and when you really think about it, would you have expected nothing less from Deku and Bakugo, who wants to be the number one heroes, the best heroes, and how can they really be the best heroes if they can't even save their teacher? So yeah, that's the end of the chapter. That was a lot, and a lot to go through. There was a lot to talk about, to basically make a summation of it, you just have the reporter talking about how the history of this country of Japan in the My Hero Academia world is going to change. You have to reveal that uh, for the most part, Shigaraki is the perfect Nomu with the strength, durability, and speed that can be comparable to All Might, even without using his quirks. We got the reveal of a, a new uh, hero sidekick. We got their un ah. we got their power revealed, which was great as well. Um, this kind of like makes sense for a um, endeavor that not everyone in his uh, agency will be uh, fire based but that they help with like mobility basically all of uh, his sidekicks are there to like boost him up so since he can't fly he's going to go in straight lines kind of some trajectory that makes a whole lot of sense uh we also get to see uh, shigaraki just going ham without using his sword showing that he's still formidable without it as well as show that shigaraki is very intelligent and he has the ability to plan things out multiple times in advance or even just plan out these things on the fly uh we get to reveal that there's another subset of no moves that are like the middle ground between regular no moves and high-end no moves where they have the strength of the high ends, but not the intelligence, which means that these heroes probably have will have an easier time taking them out, but they could potentially be even stronger than the high ends because they're unstable. Uh, that's something else that we can discuss. Uh, we got to see that uh, Garaki, when it comes to his personality, uh, he's more like flamboyant than you would think. He enjoys fighting in endeavor and enjoys mocking him. 
And um, lastly, we get to see uh, Aizawa and his... <coughs> we get to see Aizawa and his determination to uh, stand against Shigaraki and how he uh, believes that he needs to survive this uh, so that he can watch his students graduate, which kind of leads into my idea of how I believe that Aizawa will survive this war arc because even though he's declaring like his like willingness to uh, kill Shigaraki, his willingness to stop him, he's doing it for the sake of his hero, students and how he will survive to see them graduate. Meaning that he will either like die after the graduation or he may die like right before the graduation begins. But I do believe that he is going to survive this arc. So yeah. Uh, like I said, all in all, really good chapter. Really did enjoy all of the reveals that we had in this chapter. Um, and I enjoy that it's setting up more that uh, Endeavor, not Endeavor, it's setting up more that Deku and Bakugo will go up against uh, Shigaraki. So they're not just going to be staying on the sidelines. Uh, and this could also lead to even more of the students going up against uh, Shigaraki. Uh, we still have to see uh, what's going to happen with Gento Makia. So I think that what's going to happen is you're going to have Bakugo and Deku go up against Shigaraki. They're going to put up a fight. They may not, they're not going to defeat him. They're going to put up a fight. They may put him on the ropes, especially if he's unable to use his quirks. But I think obviously something's going to happen to Eraserhead to the point where Shigaraki may get the chance to try and go after Deku. Uh, this could give more credence to the fact that maybe Bakugo is going to lose his quirk and saving Deku or from what I think, probably another hero is going to try and save Deku, and eventually Gigantomachia is going to come in. And how I think this is going to end is possibly like, as soon as Gigantomachia comes in, uh, that's probably pretty much going to be the indicator of how this war is probably going to come to an end. I do believe that maybe the villains may retreat, but I believe also the heroes may retreat as well to like regroup and do all of that, and then will eventually lead to the media saying that the villains won because the heroes had to retreat and how and I believe that they may just take over the city and it may be like the hub for the villains themselves. So yeah, that's all I really want to talk about for this chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, leave a like on this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, do all of that cool jazz. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Yay.